Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Jennifer, and this is A Country Life. And I'm just looking up at the clock here. It's 9.30 in the morning. But what I really, really want to talk about today, uh, amongst just all kinds of things, number one, my videos oftentimes come out 10 to 14 days after I actually film them. Sometimes it's sooner, not all that often though. Because when I film something, it takes me a long time to get it edited because as a lot of you know, I have five kids at home, we homeschool, we um, work from home as well. And so yeah, life is just kind of busy at home. So that brings me to something that I wanna mention to you guys then. Since my videos, okay, and Sam's practicing violin in the background if you hear that. So since my videos do come out, at, you know, up to two weeks late, oftentimes, the things that are going on right now in the world or in the news are like old news, typically, by the time a video comes out. Um, so I just want to say that to you because as you, you, you know, maybe you have seen some of my videos and those were filmed prior to the coronavirus um, health emergency, national emergency, worldwide pandemic, whatever it is that you like to call it. <laughs> um, some of those videos that were filmed before that. So before it was, you know, even really a huge issue that was on our radar. So please don't feel that um, maybe we were taking things light or getting together with people or whatever it might be, they were filmed earlier. But today's video, it is the 19th. It is, um, yeah, the Feast of St. Joseph today. I have to remind Joseph that it is his feast day today. <laughs> Just looking up at the calendar. But it is the 19th of March. Did I say May? Sorry, it is the 19th of March. It was just last week, Friday, that President Trump announced that we were in a national emergency and life as we know it has really changed when it comes to outside activities and restaurants and all of that. And you guys all are very aware, I'm sure, of what has been going on. For a lot of parents who might find themselves thrust into homeschooling. Uh, school districts are doing it different across the board. So even in our area, some school districts have called off school. Okay, they've all called off school. Some schools are making it so kids in K through 6 are just like off of school. There isn't anything required um, that they have to turn in. Uh, some are making it that seven through 12 are continuing on with uh, doing like an e-learning type style of learning. Some schools are uh, requiring kids all the way down to the kindergarten level to continue to do a school at home style of work. Parents have to scan um, papers and they have to get those into the school districts. And I really cannot even imagine what that must be like for parents who might, you know, who just found themselves thrust into that. And you might be one of those parents. And I do want to just mention to you this one little bit of information. You can begin homeschooling. <laughs> you can get yourself completely out of the um, school administration's um, whatever it is that they're requiring of you. And if it is just too much, like I think about families whose both parents might be still working, uh, weren't uh, laid off. Maybe you have a child who's like 12 and you have younger children and now the 12 year old is caring for those younger children and their school district is still requiring kids to do school. That just gets to be a lot. I cannot imagine being put into that situation. My life has not felt a whole lot different. We school from home, we work from home. Some may say that we've already lived the isolated life. <laughs> we live in the middle of the woods. Nobody can see me when I go outside. I can't see anyone else when I go outside. So some may say that I've already lived the isolated life, but I back to the school thing. Let me just, I need to get in some better lighting here for you guys. So let me, yes, Peter. Um, on the radio it yeah. said, they're talking about spring cleaning and it said beer is used to clean. Oh, okay. Peter just informed us that on the radio he heard that you can use beer to do spring cleaning. Is that drinking it to make the spring cleaning more enjoyable or is that using beer as a uh, germ killer? I don't know. If you are feeling like whatever um, stipulations that your school district is putting onto you or your children during this time, you can definitely just homeschool them. Not school at home, but you can actually legally homeschool them. So just go to your state's uh, education website. And in our state, um, I'm in Wisconsin, 
And so I just, if I type in how to withdraw my, my child from public school in Wisconsin, there's just a little directions come right up here. We have to fill out form PI-1206, and then you have to notify your school district that you are withdrawing your child. You wanna make sure that you do that because if you don't, they will be considered truant. <laughs> and so you do need to follow those guidelines. Every state has some sort of guidelines here. And then, you know what? You can homeschool them at home in the way that you feel best works in this time. It could be, you could do this till the end of the school year and then just get them right back into school come next next year. But I do think that it could ease a lot of the pain and the discomfort <laughs> that a lot of families are feeling these days. Okay, so with that, let me, let me just read to you here quickly what it does say if I just type in for the United States in general. Here's what it says. You must withdraw your child from any public school they are attending by sending a letter of withdrawal containing your name, signature, names of children to be withdrawn, your address, and the date. Neglect to do so can label your child as a dropout or truant. And that was uh, from homeeducator.com as of, this of 2019. So just in case you needed to hear that, I wanted you guys to know that that is an option if you're feeling like life has been turned upside down and the requirements that the school is putting on you is just too much to do. Okay, so here's what we have going today. Um, we are going to be working on school. I hope Sam's doing math. Yes. Ooh, show us that number. No, it was wrong. <laughs> it was wrong? Uh-oh. <laughs> And um, yeah, so Sam is working on algebra right now, and um, it's kind of a gloomy, rainy, drizzly day. Later today, we're supposed to be starting to get maybe even some thunderstorms. I do have to go find Joseph and Peter and Maria. I'm pretty sure they're back listening to music, hence Peter coming out and telling me what he's hearing on the radio news. And um, so as soon as I'm done, you know, talking to you guys, I'm going to grab them. We're going to go out and sit down and do um, handwriting. Let me show you something. Last week, I put up these little lists here for Joseph and Peter and Maria just because sometimes I'll be working with Sam or sometimes I'm doing something on the computer or maybe doing something in the kitchen, whatever. I'm a mom. I'm doing other things. And so I did put up a little list so that they can kind of keep track of some things that they can do on their own without me and we still feel like we have accomplished something. So like, for example, Joe's right behind me. Hey, guess what, Joe? Guess what? What? What does this say to do first thing today? Uh, I know, but you know, like, I want to see some how you do your trampoline. You want to go on the trampoline? No, it's raining outside, or at least it's pretty wet. You need to work from your handwriting book. So this is Joe's handwriting no. book. Yep. No. Yesterday no. he was, oh no, that's eyes. Yesterday no. he was working on L's, I think. Did you do that whole page yesterday all by yourself? Yeah, I did. Yes, you did. Why don't you come sit down and work on the next page now? You're going to work on K's today. No. Yes. No! <laughs> okay, you sit down. <laughs> Can you show me your grumpiest face? Show me a grumpy face. No. Can you show me a happy face? Mom? No face? Not today. Mom? Okay. You work on your K's, okay? Hey! So, I got Joe working on his K's and his other words. Sam, I got him on track for algebra. And I did want to just kind of show to you guys, uh, I did post this on Instagram last night that I was making, I got three meals actually made yesterday while I was making yesterday's supper. So yesterday's supper plus two more meals. Because like I always say, since I'm in the kitchen, I might as well do kitchen stuff. <laughs> and kitchen stuff to me usually is not cleaning, it's usually making more food, which makes more of a mess, okay? So I did get this, I don't wanna take the lid off this, but this is called Super Beef Barbecue. And I always keep a little sticky note next to it because I know that I will forget what to do if I don't keep a note. 4.30 is the time I'm gonna shred the meat. 10.45, I'm gonna turn it back to low because I wanted to get this on at six and then I got up and then I forgot and then Warren and I started talking and then we had coffee and then he made breakfast. I'm like, <gasps> I was supposed to get that going right away at six and I forgot. So I did have to put it on high for a couple hours. But anyways, all that is, it's a bottle of barbecue sauce, a cup of ketchup, a little bit of dried minced onion, a little bit of minced garlic, and then an entire jar of dill pickles, the 
all of the liquid that you know yummy brine and the pickles are all in there and then i did put in two beef roasts because my one just seemed pretty small so i went and got another one quick it wasn't thawed i threw it in frozen yesterday um and i just put the lid on it put it in the fridge and this morning i'm just cooking it down and so that is really really easy and it's very very tasty at the very end you take it all out shred it and then um you pull the pickles out you leave all the juice in there and serve it on buns or you could serve it over like with mashed potatoes with rice whatever okay so um yeah i'm just kind of trying to give you guys a little peek into what uh, a homeschool day kind of looks like running back and forth between doing mom stuff and doing um homeschool stuff okay so peter cleaned their bedroom i'm pretty sure most of everything in here is going to be peter and joseph clothes which is disappointing to me because I do have a rule that we wear our clothes until they're seriously soiled. And I know that some of this is not seriously soiled. It's going to have to get washed anyway now that it's with all the other dirty, stinky laundry. So I'm going to sort this up, put it in the wash machine. One thing that I did forget to mention, I wanted to mention right at the beginning, is that there is an entire list from, I think it's the Kids Activities blog or something like that. And... They put together a whole list of educational companies that are offering free resources at this time. So like most of them are subscription based and so there would norm normally be a monthly fee like ABC Mouse, Khan Academy. Uh, there are, there's, I mean the list goes from A to Z, literally. Um, every single letter of the alphabet, <laughs> there are multiple. So I will put a link in the description box below. So if you are thinking like, oh my gosh, I'd like to homeschool, but what should I do? There, first, first read. <laughs> read to all your children, no matter their age. Have the kids that can read, read to you. Cook, get outside, you know, take a walk. Um, do a few chores. There's nothing wrong with spending some time washing some floors or doing some dusting that maybe you've been wanting to get done in a long, long time and now's the time. Play with toys that haven't ever been played with since Christmas because there just hasn't been time. Do those kinds of things. But on top of that, if you are thinking, well, that just doesn't seem to be enough, well then you can just go to the description box below here and check out that link. There are so many different companies offering free resources and I'm gonna check on this I may also put a link to teaching textbooks because they're not on this list, but I did see something swimming around somewhere, I feel like, that said that teaching textbooks was also giving free subscriptions. And if that actually is true, I'm going to put the link in the description box below. And if it isn't true, you still you can check out teachingtextbooks.com because uh, they have excellent, excellent um, online math resources. And then don't underestimate... For the youngest children, uh, if you want something that's not computer-based or you're just not able to have that, um, you know, you don't have a great internet connection or something like that, then Dollar Tree Workbooks. <laughs> I Not every child likes that kind of thing, but if you have a child who does, you know what? Use, utilize it. <laughs> Run with it because it's very, very easy to do. It keeps their little hands occupied for a little while out of the day anyway. So, okay. I just wanted to uh, pop in and mention that and back to homeschool for us. kids are all actually very happily working on their schoolwork right now which is really really a treat and uh yeah that is barbie doll hair <laughs> all over my black rug you guys know how much i love this rug really i do love it i just don't like that it gets dirty so fast anyway greenstock had reached out to me and they shipped me this for free I haven't even gotten the box completely open. I'm really, really excited though. This is going to be one of those uh, tiered planters. 
Vertical planter instructions. It was super easy to put together. Everything just kind of uh, sets together. It isn't real stable right now because there isn't, you know, it's not full of soil. But once you fill, once I fill these all with uh, soil, then these will seat themselves nice and tight in here. Let me show you one with I the have light. Many questions. Okay, then they'll seat themselves nice and tight in there. This and will go grow like right that. Here. Okay, and then the plants are going to grow. So let's just look at the picture here. It talks about how many plants should I plant per pocket? And they even show here if you were to if your plants were to already be growing as of May 7th, what it should look like on the 17th, on the 21st, and on the 30th. Well, we're so plant super I am really, really it comes in two colors. So it comes in like the terracotta and color. We're doing corn. And it comes in, I think this is either called <gasps> Whoa, are you okay, sweetie? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's called clay maybe i'm not I sure have two questions here is what it tells us to do we're just going to fill it with soil now we are not set to do this yet because <laughs> let's get a look outside okay our yard no snow right now um but there's the cranberry marsh it is still pretty covered in ice out there there's a little bit of area not iced in but that's still ice let's see if we can see the pond over there Okay, pond, that oh, is pond, pond. soft. I wouldn't walk on it, but it is still ice nonetheless. So today we are not going to get this uh, started, but I did want to show you guys this. So if you did want to get one of these ordered, the cool thing about this is that um, this family is carrying on the legacy of their father and father-in-law, and they make these right in Tennessee. You pour the water in here, yes. and then it just soaks down into every single one. Exactly. So you pour the water in here, and it has these little holes, and it... And then it soaks down into, too. yep, and then it soaks down, it runs down the center tube. I know my filming is not the best, I'm sorry guys here, but it runs down these center tubes and then collects in these trays and then disperses the water into the plant for, um, you know, each plant. So I am super excited about this. This is really cool. They sent along some organic worm castings. They also sent along this packet of mixed lettuce super excited i'm gonna put wait, that right seeds? yeah i'm gonna put that right in the top one and i'm going to wait, get especially for this year one thing i really really want to buy are some uh, cherry tomato vines that i plant into each one of these and let them kind of like grow down and we'll pick them where, for breakfast that's just a favorite of mine yeah i'll put a link in the description box below in case you are interested in you know just learning more about how this can be a benefit to gardening providing food for your family um and in a very very compact area so super exciting yes i'm gonna be making lunch here i'm gonna get started on making lunch here normally we just do really really simple for lunch whatever leftovers we have from the last day or two and then I usually supplement with maybe hot dogs or um, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches or, you know, Sam's kind of been into making ramen in the microwave. So really, it's just super, super simple for lunch. But yesterday, one of the other things that I got going when I was in the kitchen doing supper is I made the meat for these pizza cups. Um, one single recipe makes six muffin cups. So I'm just gonna make one batch because we do have leftover meatloaf and rice from supper last night. And so I think between six of these and lunch, we can feed uh, the six of us who are here. So that's what I'm gonna get working on right now.
plumbing is good. Okay, so I had these in at 375 degrees. The recipe did say 400, but I'm using a dark pan, so I like to go 25 degrees um, less than that. So I did 375, and again, the recipe said 10 to 12, and these were actually in for 13 minutes, um, and I think that they are just right. Wow, I am. they look just like the picture, which is amazing, and I think that they should be nicely cooked all the way through. They feel cooked, so I'm really, really looking forward to trying one of these. You all, a person's a person no matter how small, and you very small persons will not. Okay, so lunch is all done. Warren is doing what he always does. Maria always brings him a book after lunch before he can even stand up. So he's reading to them uh, some Dr. Seuss, and then uh, I was just picking up lunch and everything. So I wanted to mention to you guys that that recipe, the pizza cups, I will put a... Um, Either I'll link to it if I can find it or I'll just copy it from the cookbook. It's sort of like a magazine version of Fix It and Forget It. And it's from, I think, 2013 or something like that. So a couple notes about the pizza cups where it says three-fourths to one cup. No, no, no. Where it says three-fourths to one pound meat, you really only need three-fourths to one pound. I actually ended up doubling it because I wanted to be able to make double the pizza cups. Um, because the recipe says it only makes six. Once we baked them, they were very, very bready with not a lot of meat. So next time I would make the same amount of biscuit mix, but then I would divide that between 12 muffin cups and then put more meat in each muffin cup. We also talked about putting some mozzarella cheese kind of on the bottom. So when you put the the dough in and you kind of press it up the sides put a little sprinkling of mozzarella cheese then put the meat then put a little more cheese over the top because we all thought it needed less bread more meat more cheese but the flavor really really good kids are obviously done with their story <laughs> so we this afternoon here now um, i'm hoping to do some baking of some like desserts and things like that because oh my goodness we're checking traps oh yeah you and dad are going to check traps um, because I'm gonna have to do some baking this afternoon because what happens when you are around all the time you can buy snacks that you think are gonna last like a week and in two days <laughs> they seem to be completely gone and that seems to be where we are right now so I'm gonna do some baking make some ginger bars this afternoon I might make some cranberry bars of some sort this afternoon I was thinking maybe of making just some general chocolate chip cookies although Warren also mentioned he might do that tonight so I don't know if I'm gonna get to it you did mention that. Although he also was talking about trying to do taxes with Amber tonight as well. So I don't know what exactly we're gonna get done here. Um, hi, Joe. Come say hello to everybody. Hello, people. <laughs> that was so funny. Hello, people. Hello, kids. <laughs> say hi to everybody, huh? That's good. You don't miss anyone, do you? Did you just have milk? Yeah. I think so. I see milk. You have a milk mustache. Oh, and I also um, forgot to mention that what I did then, what I did with the leftover meat, just because it's Thursday, tomorrow we won't be eating meat. I have, I have this um, super beef barbecue going, so we're going to have, I know we'll have leftovers of that on Saturday. And I really did not want this to go to waste. And so I divided it into two uh, meals worth, and this will be enough to make like 12 cups of, um, you know, 12 of the pizza cups. So I'm just going to pop this in the freezer.
three bars are in the oven already over that way. <laughs> Sam is just holding the molasses upside. Don't shake it, okay? But I'm going to make some ginger bars now. Ginger and bars. yeah, that's Yummy. what's going on. Just doing a little bit of baking here this afternoon. I wrote a little note this morning that says to shred at 4.30, so I'm going to actually turn this off, 
pull all of the uh, meat out, shred that. I'm going to get the pickles out of this as well and then put it all back in there. I am going to be making half potatoes, so <laughs> lots of lots of chattering around here. I am going to make half potatoes. Basically, I just put a bunch of oil on the pan with um, seasoned salt, some garlic powder, and pepper. Really, I mean, whatever. If you like salt and pepper and parsley, go with that. If you just like onion salt or something, do that. Whatever. And then I just scrubbed up my potatoes, half potatoes, 400 degrees. I'm going to put these in for probably about an hour until the bottoms get really, really toasty. And then that will allow them to like release right away. I really want to get this video edited because, um, you know, I put a lot of very now pertinent information in the beginning of this video. And so I just really want to get that out to you guys. So I'm going to work really, really hard tonight to try to get this edited and get it up maybe by tomorrow morning. You guys know my rural internet service is not always um, very reliable. So that's what's going to happen. Uh, no ginger bars until after supper. I will show you. Here are the finished bars though. These are the ginger bars. They don't look like much, but these are phenomenal. This was a little recipe that came in one of those booklets when you get like a new little appliance. And this was in a, a mixer that I had bought at one point. And it was just one of those little recipes. I'm like, oh, it doesn't take very many ingredients. I'll try it. And we've been making this for years and years. I don't even have the mixer anymore. That broke long ago. But anyway, this is super good. And then just the cranberry bars with the cream cheese frosting. So there you go. That's what those look like. Also in my P.O. box was this beautiful print from a company called, let me peek at it again, The Saints Project. I don't remember anybody ever contacting me about it or how it all went down. But anyway, this was in there. Just a beautiful big beautiful beautiful picture of the holy family and i'm going to put this in a frame i have a black frame and i think i'll put this right out in our school room so or maybe in my bedroom i don't know anyway it's going to go on the wall so just just wanted to show you that too righty so i just got this laundry folded and remember this morning i said that joseph and peter had cleaned their room <laughs> so warren had one thing in the load there's all joe's there's all Peter's and Maria did have a few things too. So yeah, when they clean their room, this is what happens. Oh, it drives me nuts. And I do apologize if you guys are not really into seeing products. I didn't mean for today, you know, I showed you guys the, um, ooh, that is a loud pacifier movie. Um, I showed you this morning the like gardening tower that was sent to me. And then I showed you the variety fun box and I showed you that, um, uh, holy art print. I just feel like I showed you guys lots of products today. Didn't necessarily mean to um, do that. None of those things were sponsored. Um, I mean, Variety Fun, I am a partner with them, but they don't pay me anything to do that. So, okay, I'm going to head out to the shop because I don't know if you guys know this, but Warren is actually a woodworker. So these cabinets and the cupboard doors, he built all of those. Um, actually he built my cutting board over there which we set something on it once this cutting board actually was built by Uncle Dan um, let's see yeah he did like all the wood walls you see in the house Warren um, did that actually is even pine right off of the property here and uh, this oak is off the property as well he built the island here he Let's see. I mean, if I just walked around the little kid table over there, he built, he built our cedar chest over there. He built the bookcase there. In our bedroom, he has built a lot of things as well. So like our, um, our dresser, he built even, even, actually he built that back in high school, I think. And uh, before I even knew him, he built our bed. He built our nightstand. Um, anything out here that dad built? I don't think so, nothing out in this room. So, but I'm gonna, nope, he didn't build that. We actually bought that. It is raining, but I have two grease rags to take out to him. Yesterday, Maria put her foot right through the thin spot on the knees of one of her pairs of leggings. Oh, I need an umbrella, bad. Okay, and then Peter, I don't know what he did, but he ripped up the side of a t-shirt all the way from his waist to his armpit the one day and neither of them were really good things. So 
I'm not gonna repair them. I'm just gonna let Warren use them as a grease rig. So that is an enormous umbrella. All right, so we're gonna go outside. If I can do this in the rain, one hand on the camera, one hand holding the... Okay, you guys are gonna have to wait for me for a second. Okay, there we go. <laughs> and I'm gonna show you what his latest project is that he's working on. Button yet. We had a red button incident earlier today, but I got it pushed now. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. cold out here. It is cold. I mm -hmm. was just telling everybody all or about all the things that you built in the house and that you've got a new project going on. Yes. So there we go. There's a bunch of the wood. It will be uh, Nick's pantry cabinet. His huh. new apartment doesn't have a pantry, so he needs something to stack food on. Because he eats a lot of it. <laughs> So I'm just squaring up the boards right now. It's going to have, it's going to be pretty basic. It's going to be three feet wide, five foot, two inches tall, uh, with five shelves, okay. two doors, yeah, pretty basic. Cool. This is all homegrown wood too. From where? Where did you cut it? You don't uh, remember? No, this stuff came um, off of uh, below the buzzer tail. Oh, okay. <laughs> Peter's plate, what is his plate? Yeah, supper time. There's <laughs> Peter's plate. <laughs> and Sam. Can we put you on there? Yeah, fine. And Tony. <laughs> and Amber. And Joe is working on it. I don't want that. Oh, wow. Bring it over here. You guys have a fantastic evening. And, um... Stay well, stay calm, and I hope that life in your neck of the woods is going um, better than you've expected it to go. We'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.